Hey there, welcome to Bandit's Keep. I'm Daniel, and in this video, we're going to talk about designing an adventure for a one shot versus a campaign, and we'll touch a little bit on the idea of convention games. If you guys want to know more about convention games, let me know in the comments below, and I could talk about that in a future video. But one of the very first things here we want to do is set our goals. And I don't mean goals as in like the PC's goals, but our goal. What are we designing this adventure for? Is it for one or two nights of gaming with our home group? Is it for a three hour or four hour convention slot? Or is this an adventure that's just going to be plugged into a campaign that you play weekly or bi-weekly with the same group? All of these are slightly different and we'll approach them in a different manner. So I'm going to kind of go over one shots first, then we'll go over campaigns and we'll talk about the differences. So first of all, a goal for a one shot is generally just to have fun, right? It's a one or maybe two session game. Maybe you're introducing new players to a system. Maybe you're playing something in between your campaign because some people couldn't make it. There's lots of reasons to do a one shot. Sometimes you just found an adventure online and you want to run it, but we're assuming you're writing an adventure here. So a one shot, again, is very self-contained and it's got that purpose. Sometimes you'll even have pre-generated characters made for the players up front. Generally, in a campaign game, players are going to make their own characters. So when you're talking about one-shots, you usually talk about a couple of different styles that are popular. One is the five-room dungeon, and I've talked about that a little bit. There's a video here on the channel about it. There's also this kind of idea of like a cinematic rise and fall of action that a lot of people talk about in one-shots. What it effectively is, though, in both cases, are more or less linear-type adventures. The reason why is because... If you've got four hours with your friends and you just drop them in a town and say, what do you do? They're not going to be able to accomplish much. So what you want to do is have a clear goal in a one shot. The players should know, OK, we're going into this dungeon to get the blue gem or we're going to go rescue the prince that was kidnapped by the evil sorceress. They need to have these or maybe they're going to slay a dragon, right? Whatever the goal is, they should know this. And it doesn't mean you have to say it. This game is going to be about this. You could do that. But it could be as simple as starting off in the middle of a fight. They've been protecting a caravan and then the some of the bandits run off with a, an item they were supposed to be protecting. They're not going to get paid if they don't get that item to safety. So there's the adventure, right? They have a set goal, chase the bandits, get the stuff back to town. Easy, right? That's a one shot. In order to maintain the proper pacing for a one shot, I generally work in scenes, meaning that I'm creating several things going on, perhaps a clearing in the woods with an ogre that's digging a hole, or the bandits are trying to cross a river, or there's a room in a dungeon, right? That could be a scene. There's a, a, a chest of gold in the middle with a trap, right? These are all scenes. The player characters, or the players really, can interact with these scenes however they want. The key here is that none of these scenes has to happen. I'll say that part again because that's important. None of these scenes has to happen. All of them should be capable of pushing the, the player characters forward or back, right? Challenge is important here, but none of them have to happen. And the reason for that is because if you have five or six scenes and the players start really role-playing a lot in one scene and they take up a lot of time and you're running low, you can pull scenes out. The only scenes you really need to always use are the opening scene where the action is initiated. Maybe they're at the, the entrance of the dungeon, which talk about in a second. And then you need some kind of end game, like you need the scene that they're going to be able to get the, the final item. And that scene might actually be something that you just have rough notes on, because in the bandit example I just gave, you don't know exactly how many bandits are going to be left, what the situation is. But you might set up, let's say, the bandit chief waiting with 12 mercenaries for the other bandits to return. And perhaps they set an ambush if the PCs are making too much noise coming up. Now, because of this scene structure and no scene being 100% important, I do a more of a point crawl setup with no map. In other words, I make these scenes interconnected and anything in between the crawling through the different corridors of the dungeon, the climbing the side of the mountain, the going through the forest is either done with some tables with possible random monsters and traps or just narratively. This way, the dungeon can be as big or as small as needed based on how fast the player characters are going through it. What I would normally recommend, I know in a five room dungeon, there's five rooms, but I usually make six, seven scenes of different types. And when I say different types, I mean different things going on. Every scene shouldn't be a bunch of monsters standing in a room. There could be some obstacles. There should be potentially traps, maybe trick rooms, uh, secret doors, things like this. And what you're going to do, again, is kind of work your way through them. I would put them in the order that I think they're important or that are logical, and then I would point crawl them. Just make sure that you're consistent, right? If they go from they go through the door on the on the right 
and they encounter the ogre's lair, if they come back there, make sure that you know that that door on the right goes to the ogre's lair. And by doing this, you can make the one shot fit in that time allotted. Now, I kind of hinted on this already, but in a one shot, you want to start at the dungeon, as we say. So if it's a dungeon crawl, they should be at the entrance of the dungeon. You can give them some rumors. You've traveled here for three days after hearing the rumor of the gold at the bottom of the dungeon. This is where you tracked down the owlbear that you're out to slay. You, you want to start them there. You don't want to start them in town searching around for rumors because that kind of thing can take a long time. What you want to do is get them at the action. You can always add fluff in the middle and add role playing and throw in a few NPCs if you want to make the adventure a little longer, but you don't want to run out of time. One of the keys here to the one shot and the thing that really gets on my nerves as a player personally, and especially at conventions, is that if you do not finish on time, if somebody tells me, hey, I'm going to run a one shot, would you like to be a player? It's going to be four hours on Saturday, and then we play four hours, and then they're like, oh, you guys are only halfway through. Can we schedule another day? Or, hey, can we play two hours extra? Well, especially at a convention, no, I can't play two hours extra. I have another game, <laughs> right? So make sure that if you slot, let's say, four hours to do a one shot, try to make it be done in three. Again, it's better to be done a little bit early where people are just like, yes, then get to the point where you run out of time and everybody's like, well, I guess we're not going to finish the one shot. This can be tricky if you're new, but again, make them shorter than longer. That's usually the plan. Four or five scenes should be done fairly simply in a four hour period. If it's got a lot of combat, depending on your system, it might take longer. So keep that in mind. Okay, let's talk campaigns. Now, I'm talking about once the campaign's already going. I've talked about this before. I generally don't say to people, hey, we're going to do this five-year campaign. What I normally do is start off with one shots and two shots and things like that. And then if people are enjoying it, I build up, right? So the first episode, if you will, of the campaign should probably be effectively a one shot. But forgetting about that for now, let's say we're in the middle of the campaign. You've been running for weeks. You want to create an adventure for the players. Number one, when you're creating adventures for a campaign, know your players. Know the player characters, sure, but know your players. Know what they like to do, what's going to lead them. Because in the campaign, you don't want it to be 100% linear. You want lots of options. So effectively, you're going to kind of know what the players like to do so you can put things in front of them that they'll want to do and enjoy the game. And again, that's why I say players, not player characters. Now we're in a one shot, you build scenes. In a campaign, you build locations. I'm going to build a town. I'm going to build an ogre's lair. I'm going to build a witch's hut in the woods. These are locations that the player characters can interact with multiple times with lots of things going on. They're not just a gnome digging a hole in the woods. They're a village of gnomes or a small cluster of gnomes that are starting a mine, right? This is going to be something that is ongoing in the campaign, and we're going to track as things progress, they'll keep digging the hole deeper and deeper, and maybe they'll get the mine going, and then maybe there'll be more silver in town, or maybe they dig down deep enough, they open up, and there's a purple worm, and now the player characters might be hired to take care of that. So again, you want to build locations, not scenes, when building a campaign adventure. Whereas on a one-shot, I usually go with point crawl. When I'm building a campaign, I want detailed maps. Detailed maps because, again, a campaign means the player characters might investigate in multiple times. It's not like you go to a dungeon, you wipe out a couple monsters and you leave and, okay, you never go back. At least not in my campaigns. That that empty cave now that you just left there might get populated by something else. Or maybe there's extra rooms that opened up. Or maybe it's a mega dungeon. There's multiple levels. They're going to be going back to it. You want to give them something they want to go back to. In order for the world to seem real and seem interconnected, you want them to pass the same sites multiple times. You want them to interact with things. You want them to be like, oh, there was a cave that we, uh, you know, routed out uh, an ogre. We can camp there when they're traveling, stuff like that, right? So you want to make sure that your maps are detailed and that you've got something they can work with. This is where I have players often make maps or buy maps or whatever so that they can, players make maps, PCs buy maps, I should say. Uh, that way they can have information about the land. So I'm going to say it one more time because this is important. You want to start with the PC's interest, right? Know your players, but start with the PC's interest. So this adventure should be based on things they've been talking about. Maybe they're in a town and they've met a few NPCs who have given them some uh, ideas of where they might go. Maybe they're on the road from the last adventure. Maybe uh, the dragon slayed one of the player characters and now they want to take revenge. So they're heading out to fight the dragon. So these adventures should be tied into what the player characters are interested in 
and you should have plenty of locations and things to do that the players like. And kind of the final point here, which is the opposite of a one-shot, is never be done. Ideally, in a campaign, at the end of each session, it should be like, okay, we're going to go down this path. You go, you know what, we're, we'll do that next week. That way the players are always on a cliffhanger, always waiting. Now, I know there are things that are called West Marches, which a lot of people talk about, which is basically just playing D&D the old-fashioned way. But in any case, where they always say return to the hometown, well, in that kind of a campaign, it's a little different. You're kind of assembling a bunch of one-shots or you're doing a mega dungeon. So that would be the one time where you want to make sure everybody's back in town if you play that kind of thing. But if you're doing an ongoing kind of heroic epic campaign, which many of us do these days, you know, your your player characters are moving forward through time. You want to keep things going. You want to leave them just at the edge. Maybe they just completed a huge battle and they're looking around at the carnage. Maybe they're just about to start a big battle. Maybe an NPC says something a little off to them and they kind of question it. You want to leave it on a cliffhanger. This makes people excited to come back for the next session because a campaign is all about the next session, the next session, the next session. There's definitely not a one-size-fits-all way to make adventures. If all you're doing is creating adventures the same way every time, maybe you should try some other techniques. I think that your players will like the change. <laughs> in any case, let me know in the comments below what you guys do. Do you have different go-to things when you're making adventures? I'd love to hear about them. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Ring the bell so you get notifications. If you like this video, share it around different groups that you're part of so we can grow the channel. And I'll see you next time.